Thomas go. You know, we talk about people just not understanding and people just not getting it. When you tell them, you ever told somebody something a hundred times and they just don't seem like they don't get it? Well, let me tell y'all about a guy or a kid that was that way. Uh, I ain't going to say what baby was doing. Uh, <laughs> tell you about a kid that was that way. There was This was back, you know, years ago. And they were out in the holler, out in the middle of the country. I'm talking about... You think we're in the country now? This ain't nothing compared to where they were at. They was out in the country. I'm talking about rednecks. They was rednecks. And uh, Grandma told grand told her grandson, she said, now you listen here, youngin. She said, the preacher's coming in, and he's going to have dinner with us tonight. And I don't want to hear no talk. I don't want to hear no slang. I don't want to hear no disrespect come out of your mouth. As soon as I hear something come out of your mouth that I don't like, I'm going to send you outside with your granddaddy, and he's going to wear you out and light you up. And he said, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So the preacher gets there. They get ready to eat. They got the food all over the table looking real good. And uh, he said, they, they say the grace. And after they get done saying grace, he says, hey, Grandpa, would you pass me pass me them gosh burnt potatoes down there? And uh, Grandpa, Grandma said, what I say? And he just looked. Said, take him out. So Grandpa took him out and lit him up. Lit him up, wore him to slap out. They come back inside. And uh, they sit back down. He said, all right, Grandma says, now what would you like to eat? He said, I want some of them gospel to potatoes. <laughs> Grandma said, all right, that's it. Take him back out. <laughs> she took him outside and wore him out. This happened about three times. Finally, about the, the, the fourth time they come back in, and uh, she says, all right, what would you like? He said, I know what I ain't asking for. I ain't asking for them gospel potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> Some people just don't get it. <laughs> Some people just don't get it. You can preach and tell them, and they just, it is what it is. Right. That's right. Yep. John, chapter number 12. I felt like we needed a little laugh today. Yep. Verse number 20. Pick it back up where we left off two weeks ago. And there were certain Greeks among them that came up to worship at the feast. The same came therefore to Philip, which was at Bethesda. Chapter 12 and verse number 20. Aha, preacher's not off today. I'm in the right spot. We'll start back at verse number 20 for Brother Jimmy. Verse 20. And there were certain Greeks among them that came up to worship at the feast. The same came therefore to Philip, which was of Bethesda of Galilee, and desired him, saying, Sir, we would see Jesus. Philip cometh and telleth Andrew, and again Andrew and Philip tell Jesus. Jesus answered them, saying, This hour is come that the Son of Man shall be glorified. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. He that loveth his life shall lose it. He that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall, there, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Now is my soul troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this cause I came, I unto this hour. Father, glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and we'll glorify it again. You imagine them sitting there, Jesus is talking, and all of a sudden you just hear this booming voice saying, It's glorified! That scared me to death! Where was we at? Verse number 20, uh, 29. The people therefore that stood by and heard it said that it thundered. Others said an angel spake to him. Jesus answered and said, This voice came not because of me, but for your sakes. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. And if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. This he said, signifying what death he should die. The people answered him, We have heard of the law, that Christ abideth forever. And how sayest thou, The Son of Man must be lifted up. Who is the Son of Man? Then Jesus said unto them, Yet a little while is the light with you. Walk while it is light with you. Walk while ye have the light lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whither he goeth. While ye have the light, believe in the light, that ye may be the children of light. These things spake Jesus and departed, and he did hide himself from them. Lord, we come to you tonight 
as humbly as I know how, just thanking you for being so good to us, Lord. You've given us another opportunity to be here tonight. Lord, you didn't have to do that. Lord, you give us another day to live. Lord, you didn't have to do that. Lord, I just thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Lord, I love you tonight. Lord, I thank you for another opportunity to stand and preach thus saith the word of God. Lord, you've called me to do this, and I ask you to help me. I can't do it without you. Lord, I pray you'd help your people tonight. These things we ask in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. Y'all look with me again at verses 20 through 22 real quick as we go verse by verse through this. One more time, we're going to read them. Uh, verse 20. And there were certain Greeks among them that came up to worship at the feast. The same came therefore to Philip, which was of Bethesda of Galilee, and desired him, saying, Sir, we should see Jesus. We would see Jesus. Philip cometh and telleth Andrew, and again, Andrew and Philip tell Jesus. Jesus has been held now as the coming king. Y'all remember we talked about him making his great entrance through there? And they're waving palm branches at him. And they're saying, he's the king. Come save us. Come save us. The, the Pharisees have already said, the world's gone after him. We're going to lose our jobs. We're going to lose our peace. We're going to lose our minds. Because we ain't got nothing. Because Jesus is coming to take it all. And that's exactly the way that it works. Amen. Amen. But he's at the height of his popularity still. In verse 19, the Pharisees even made the statement, I've already said that, that the whole world has gone after him. He was so popular that not just the Jews, but the Greeks also who represented the rest of the world wanted to see this man. They were coming from everywhere. Verse 20 through 22 said, they came so that they could see Jesus. Hey, I heard of a man one day that could save my soul. And you know what I did? I went down to an altar so that I could meet this man. Amen. You know what happened to me on that night? I got gloriously saved. My life was changed forever. I finally got to meet Jesus. One of these days, I'm finally going to get to see him face to face with my own eyes. Amen. It's not going to be of my spirit and feeling. It's going to be flesh to flesh. I'm going to get to meet him. Amen. Amen. And I can't wait to meet him. But most people... And a lot of this world, they want Jesus. They don't want the Jesus that we have. They want what we have. They don't want what we have. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Or does that sound confusing to you? They want what we have. But they don't want what we have. They want our peace. They want our comfort. They want the, 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 the peace that only He can give. In a day like today, when we're ready to go home and be the glory, amen, and we can sit here tonight and feel the presence of the Holy Spirit still in this place tonight. That's because God is good. Amen. Amen. Right. God is good. And the world wants that. They want that peace. Most people, if they'd have been a part of uh, of something like we've been a part of today, they went crazy. They went all over, oh, oh gosh, what are we going to do? Do you know what? We didn't do that. Mm -hmm. The Lord took care of it. Peace came upon this place, and there's still peace here tonight. Amen. 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 That's because we come to see Jesus. That's right. I didn't come to see other stuff. I didn't come to see you. I love you. Hey, Thursday, I came to see you. Amen. I come to hang out with some of you on Thursday. Uh, on Friday night, Saturday night, I come to hang out with you. I come to see some of y'all on Saturday night. Today, I didn't come to see you. I came to see one person. And that was Jesus, amen. amen. And I said, I'm going to get him whether anybody else does or not. Amen. Right. amen. I said, we come to see Jesus. But they misunderstood. And for a few minutes, that's what I want to preach on this morning, tonight. The misunderstood Messiah. The misunderstood Messiah. He came as king. That's what they were. They were, they were ready to crown him king. They were ready to say he's taking over the world. He's getting ready to be king. He's getting ready to take everything. And you know what? When Jesus steps on the scene, that's what happens. He is in full control. Amen. amen. By the way, he didn't lay it. He didn't give his life. Uh, he didn't uh, was in full control while he was on the cross. He didn't just allow them to beat him. He knew what they were going to do. Amen. He was let them beat him. Amen. He wasn't. It wasn't uh, him committing suicide. He knew what was happening. He laid his life down willingly amen. so that we could be saved. Amen. Number one, I want you to. Look at these misunderstandings of the Messiah. Number one, there was a misunderstanding in his glory. You know, verse. let's read these verses real quick, then we'll get into it. Verse 23. And Jesus answered them, saying, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. He that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it, 
unto life eternal. If any man serve me, let him follow me. Where I am there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Uh, there was a misunderstanding with his glory. You know what they thought that Jesus Christ was coming to do at this time? Take over. Talked about that a little bit last time. The Pharisees thought it. That's why they started worrying. The crowd thought it. That's why they got excited. And the, the, the um, disciples thought it. That's why they were excited. Because they were ready for Jesus to come and take over. They thought he was getting ready to set up his throne, his kingdom right there. And boy, wouldn't that have been glorious? That right there would have been. And when he said the hour has come, I'm sure his disciples perked up a few minutes and said, Oh, this is it. This is it. We're finally getting what we've been waiting on. Jesus is getting ready to be crowned king. This thing's getting ready to get real sweet. Hey, we get ready to be headed home. That ain't what happened. And that's not what Jesus said would happen. That's when he begins to tell this story. The Greeks had seen Jesus praised and adored by thousands. It was as if the world had just accepted him as king. What Jesus did was try to correct this misunderstood idea of the Messiah held by the world. You see, they thought he was getting ready to be king. But he was getting ready to go to the cross. He was getting ready to die. That's what he's trying to explain here in these verses that we just read. You know, we think that God is, and he is, he's worthy of honor. He should have never had to die. That process of thinking is correct. He should have never had to come down here. He's God. But you know what? Because of us, he came down here. That's our fault, amen? Because of our sin. You say, why didn't God create us perfect? Because if God would have created us perfect, there would have been no point in creating us. Because God wants us to see his goodness. And without wickedness, without evil, you have no goodness. You can't have one without the other. That's why there's that constant fight there. Because if you can't see bad, you can't see good. You don't have weeds, you don't have flowers. It works that way. You've got to get rid of one in order to grow the other. That's the way it works. He wanted to prepare both the Greeks and those standing around for his death. He wanted to teach that the way to glory is not through triumph and praise. We think that it, it, the way to glory is through having a wonderful life and having uh, a great life and having big houses and having nice cars. That's usually the thought process when we think of glory. Is that not what we think of? We think of Donald Trump. Everybody talking about Donald Trump. He's got glory. He's glorious. He, he's got money galore, right? That's what you think. Amen. That, that process, we think it, it's glorious. We give them glory for having all the... Well, he must be a smart man if he can make all that money. But it's not through that that we get triumph or that we get glory. It's not through domination or sub and subjection. It's not through overpowering somebody. Oftentimes we think somebody has glory like a king because they, they sit on their throne and they tell people what to do. Kendall had me rolling the other night. This goes right along with my message. I'm going to embarrass you, little girl. Is that all right? Is that okay? Yeah, she's smiling. That means it's okay. She told me last two Sunday nights ago, she was standing up here, and she said, I want to be the preacher. She said, because I want to tell everybody what to do. I said, if it only worked that way, girl. If it only worked that way, we'd be all right. It don't work that way, though. We think glory is standing on a throne and being able to tell somebody what to do. That ain't what glory is. That ain't how we get glory. We don't get glory from our title. We don't get glory from our position. We don't get glory for, from anything. Because really and truly, if you're honest with yourself, I don't care if you're a pastor, if you're a deacon, if you're a Sunday school teacher, or if you're just somebody that walked in here off the street tonight, you ain't nothing according, uh, compared to the, to, to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We're all wicked, as we talked about this morning in our heart. Jesus said that his hour had come. The Son of Man was now to be glorified. His hour referred to his death. As the next verse states, and this whole passage shows, Jesus revealed his death by using the picture of a grain of wheat. When we, when we just looked at those verses. What good does it do if over here and over here we let the wheat and the grass just grow up? And you let it grow and grow and grow and grow. What good does it do sitting there growing? Absolutely nothing. But you take that wheat, that grass, you cut it down, you take it and feed it to a cow, right? Or to a, an animal. You can take it and make it hay and turn it into something. But you got to kill it first. It looks ugly just sitting there standing up. You ever drove through the, through the country and just thought, and all you saw was hay and a stone or grain and, and grass really high? It's the ugliest thing I've ever seen in my life. 
Just, uh, I mean, why would it, but it doesn't do any good just growing. You've got to go in and kill it first. You know what? God's glory wouldn't have been glorious unless Jesus Christ would have died on the cross. Amen. Amen. There wouldn't have been. You really think about it. And God could have done this and been a just God. He could have not came and let us all die and go to hell and he would have still been God. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He wouldn't have got no glory. No. You know why? Because we're the ones got to give him the glory. Yeah. Right. I'm glad that he changed my heart. Amen. Amen. I'm glad that he came down and saved me. I'm glad that he gave his life. Wheat's no good if it just keeps growing. You've got to chop it down before it can be prophet. Jesus must die before he can be enthroned as king. So the glory of Christ is the glory of the cross. It's the cross that stirs God to exalt his son. He said, if I'll be lifted up, he said, I'll draw all men unto me. You want to know what's going to get this crowd out there saved? You don't fuss at them for their sin. You don't, because they don't see it. They're blind to it. Right. Until the day that Jesus Christ, or the Holy Spirit, I'm sorry, convicts their heart and shows them that they're a sinner, just like he did to you and I, that day and that day only will they be saved. Amen. We don't go out preaching against the sin, amen. We go out and preach the Savior. We go out and preach that Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven, that he died on the cross, that he loves us despite our sin, amen. 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 Now when we get in here is when we preach on sin. Preaching against sin is the church. Keep us clean after we get saved. Of course, you can't get saved until first you know you're a sinner. That's right. So you do have to preach sin to the lost and to the world, but you always have to present the Savior, amen? amen? Without death, there is no life. The second thing Jesus said, that was man's hour had now come. Man must do the same as he did. In other words, man must lose his life to gain eternal life. Amen. You have to die to yourself. Boy, is that the hardest thing to do. Yeah. Like we talked about with the heart this morning, it's funny how it's summed up together. That's the hardest thing for me to do. When I want to do something, when I get angry and I want to deal with it right then, bless God, it's my, I'm going to deal with it. I'm, I'm, I'm in charge. I need the way we ought to do it. No. I need to die to my pride. And say, Lord, you deal with it. They're your people anyway. <laughs> they ain't my people. They're your people. You deal with them. Amen, amen. What did, what did Jesus mean by this unusual statement? He meant that the person who abandons this life and world, who sacrifices and gives all that he is for Christ, will save his life. You understand that, right? The only way for you to get peace and happiness in this life is to give your life to him. Amen. Even after you get saved. Mm -hmm. It's a daily walk. It's not a one-time Bam, bam, thank you, ma'am. It's a, you get saved and you're constantly being changed over time. Right. We have this idea that if once we get saved, that's it, it's over. No. We're going to heaven. Hallelujah, glory to God. And we are. I'm glad all of our yeah. sins are covered by the blood. Mm -hmm. But as soon as you get saved, you start getting in the Word. You start growing. You start weaning yourself off of milk. You start weaning yourself off of whining and complaining. And the more you grow as a Christian, the more you want to eat steak, amen, as we've talked about before. You begin a growing process. The person who keeps his life and what he has and seeks more and more of this life will lose his life completely and eternally. You want to know why he said that it's harder for you to get a, a needle through through a, or a camel through the eye of a needle than it is for a rich man to get to heaven? Because a rich man has everything down here. A rich man doesn't need heaven. Right. Yeah. I don't know about you, but heaven's looking real sweet to me in my poor, my poor situation. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I'll take heaven every day, amen. amen. I'll take it. I'm ready to go now. Amen. The person who neglects Christ, who ignores Christ, we reject Christ, will lose his life eternally. So the call of Christ is just what he says, a life of denial. You know what true love is? Being willing to give your life. Yeah. Not just in death, but every day, willing to give up something for the Lord. That's how you know you love him. When you're making some sacrifices. That's real love. We think real love is just, it's all going to be all right. Pat you on the back and going about our business. Now, real love is giving it up. Giving yep. up sacrificing for your spouse and for the Lord. <laughs> but there's more than that, more that man must do. Man must serve and follow Jesus. The person who does is assured of Jesus' presence. 
He said, I've never, David in the book of Psalms said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken. That word righteous is talking about saved and living right. He's never seen them begging for bread. I ain't never seen somebody that's faithful to the Lord, that goes to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, revival, goes to soul. I ain't never seen somebody like that out on the side of the road begging for bread, not one time in my life. Right. I've seen a lot of people that will tell you they don't go to church out on the side of the road. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wonder why that is. Because God takes care of them. And you say, oh, you're judgmental. I told you before. A righteous man judges all things. Amen. Right. Yeah. It's our job to speak out the truth. Amen. Amen. In love. Yeah. In love. You can call it judgmental, call it what you want, but it's the truth. Yeah. Never seen it. David said he'd never seen it. Righteous, saved and living right. That's not just a saved person. That's somebody that's saved and doing things right. And by the way, you can do it right. We act like we can't, but we can. But God will honor any person who honors his son. Amen. Amen. Number two, there's a misunderstanding with the Messiah's purpose. There's a misunderstanding with the Messiah's purpose. Look at me. Look with me at verse number 27 through 30. Now is my soul troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this cause came I unto this hour. Father, glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. The people thereof that stood by and heard it said that it thundered. Others said an angel spake to him. Jesus answered and said, This voice came not because of me, but for your sakes. He was about to face the great cause which he had come into this world. You do realize there was only one reason Jesus came. We say Jesus came to feed the 5,000. No, that ain't why he came. Jesus came to heal the leper. No, that ain't why he came. Jesus came to, uh, to, to show us how to live. No, that ain't why he came. You look at all those things, those are things that Jesus did, but that's not why he came. He came to die for sin, plain and simple. Amen. That's it. No other reason he came to die. One thing he come for, and he's getting ready to face that. Can you imagine what's going on in Jesus' mind at this time? His supreme purpose was to face the hour God had sent for him. He was to die. He had come to die, and to die was the supreme cause of his life. Wasn't his obedience. Oftentimes we get caught up in that. I believe we ought to be like Christ, and I believe that he did teach us how we ought to live. But that is not why he died, or not why he came. He came to die, because we couldn't do it on our own. One reason he came, and that was to die. So he says, Father, save me from this hour. He's already, can you imagine? He's already praying. <laughs> Lord, he said, my hour is about come. That can you save me? He's already asking God not to kill him. His flesh as a man. That shows us that Jesus faced everything that we face. Fear, heartache, trouble, trials. Anger, he faced it all. He, he, every emotion that we talked about this morning when we talked about the heart, Jesus has faced it already. And we worry about us. But Jesus can handle it, we can handle it. Amen. We've got the same God living on the inside of us with the Holy Ghost. Jesus prayed for the glory of God. He prayed for the Father to glorify his own name and that's significant. Shows a complete selflessness on the part of Jesus. Sure, he said, save me from this hour. Who wouldn't say that? But then he turned around and said, Lord, I want to glorify you. I want you to be glorified. He was trying to glorify the Father. Jesus was asking his Father to, uh, to glorify his own name through the cross. And God accepted and approved Jesus' prayer. The approval was audible. The voice of God literally echoed out throughout the city as he said, It's all right, son. You're going to be okay. I glorify your name. You imagine Sit there and all of a sudden you hear a voice booming from heaven. Woo! I think I might have took a run at that time. <laughs> Jesus prayed according to God's will. So God answered his prayer. For those that say God never answers their prayers, I've got to say that God will answer any prayer that is according to his will. Amen. You say, I've been praying and praying and praying. Maybe it ain't God's will. You thought about that? Yeah. That's why it's so important to know what God's will for your life is. That's why it's so important that you not follow your heart tonight, as we said this morning. It's God's will we need to be looking forward to. It's what we want ain't always what God wants. I have to tell myself that every day. You learn what God's will is by studying the word of God. God accepted Jesus' prayer. This means he accepted Jesus' death in behalf of man. We can rest assured that we're delivered from death if we just believe in Jesus. Amen. Amen. God will glorify his name in the future. 
He'll keep his word and fulfill all of his promises. The people standing around were confused. Some thought the voice was merely just thunder. They said, oh, it's just a big boom in the sky. Some thought that an angel had spoke. Jesus plainly told the people that a voice had spoken and that voice was the Father. You think they believed that? As we was talking about, April asked why, right before choir practice, she said, they see him raise Lazarus from the dead. Did they not realize that he was God, that he could raise himself? We said, no, they're blind. No, they can't see. Just like us every single day. We say, oh, we believe in God. But yet we don't trust him to get us to that next step. We argue with him the whole way. Talked a little bit about that Wednesday night. The point is this, by the thousands of people that just welcomed Jesus in triumphal entry as their earthly king and messiah, Jesus had to correct the misunderstanding of his cause. He did not come to rule as an earthly king. He did not come to feed people. He did not come to heal people. He came to die so that we could solely be healed of sin. That was it. That's why he came. That was his purpose. Number three, there was a misunderstanding about the world. And there still is today. Just as I've preached everything that so far in this text is still a problem today. This world thinks that Jesus came just to feed people. That Jesus came just to show us how to be nice. No, he came to fix a sin problem. Amen. That was his purpose. And there was a misunderstanding about the world. Look with me at verse number 31. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. Thus he said, signifying what death he should die. There was a misunderstanding about the world. The world is not what it should be. It's not what it was created to be. Y'all remember all the way back in Genesis 1-1 how it was created? It was created to be perfect. Amen. It was created for perfect harmony. Oh my, but man messed that up, didn't we? Man always misunderstands the world. He ignores the fact that the world's not perfect. How many of y'all are looking forward to tomorrow living in this world? If you're honest, you'll say amen. Even though the world's not perfect, you're looking forward to breathing another breath tomorrow. Am I saying go out and kick? No, that's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is we misunderstand it. Sometimes we think this world's good. Other than family, loved ones, there ain't really nothing good about it. You think about it. Ain't, I mean, other than and maybe banana pudding. <laughs> He ignores the fact that the world isn't in its original state or even close to it. Today, there are so many that still ignore the fact that this world is not permanent. We get up, we go to bed every night thinking we're going to wake up tomorrow, thinking that we're going to be here. And we'll cuss somebody out one day and expect to get to apologize the next day, and it don't work that way. You could be gone tomorrow and not be able to take those words back that you said. It's so important that we don't do those things. That's the problem with us as man. Uh, the world's going to be changed and recreated into new heavens and a new earth just as God intended. Then it will have its purpose after the millennial reign and all that good stuff. Standing there, the people had welcomed Jesus in the triumphal entry, thinking he was going to set up a worldly kingdom on this earth. They thought in terms of, and that's just like us, man. I, I'm, I'm, I hate that. I got to chase this rabbit because it's right there with what we're talking about. Let me shoot this rabbit real quick. America. What do we think about America? We think, oh, it's going to get better. Oh, it's going to get better. Oh, it's going to get better. If this person gets into office, it'll get better. It ain't got no better in the past, what, 200, 300 years? Why is it going to get better anytime soon? We're in a mess. This world's in a mess. It's not just America, but that's a good example. That has felt the same way. They thought it's going to get better. It's going to get better. Jesus had to correct their misconception. He had to show them that God's concern was not for man and his world to exist for just a brief time, but for eternity. God's main concern, my friend, is not your stuff. That's why it's so hard for us to get our eyes off of that stuff to get it on him. Got to get our hearts right, like I said this morning. Heaven is where we need to be concerned with. Get our eyes off the temporal, off the right now. Put it on the spiritual. Like I've said here a thousand times before, 50 years from now, everything we discuss, everything we argue about, everything that's in our house, it ain't going to matter. It's not going to matter. Note what Jesus revealed by using the word now 
He said, now it is I, my being lifted up, my cross and death, that would cause these things to happen. He said, this world would be judged, and this world is ruled by an alien power, that's God, and that both he, the, both the world and Satan would be conquered by his cross and his death. That was his main goal. That's how he defeated Satan. That's how he defeated sin, by dying and being rose again three days later. Amen. Number four, we're going to the house. There was a misunderstanding of the light. There was a misunderstanding of the light. Look, look with me at verses 34 through 36. The people answered him, We have heard out of the law what that Christ abideth forever, and how sayest thou, The Son of Man just be lifted up. Who is the Son of Man? See, standing right before him. He's right in front of their faces, and they still don't see it. I just don't get it. I'm, I just don't get it. I just don't want them gospel potatoes. I just don't get it. It don't make sense to me. Verse number 35. <laughs> then Jesus said unto them, Yet a little while is the light with you. Walk while ye have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whither he goeth. While ye have light, believe in the light, that ye may be the children of light. These things spake Jesus and departed, and did hide himself from them. There was a misunderstanding of the light. The people clearly understood that Jesus was speaking of death. That was that was not, not confusing to them. They knew he was talking about death. But what did, but um, it was that that confused him. Sorry. They had just acknowledged him to be the Messiah. They had always understood the Messiah was to live forever. So Jesus really was the Messiah. Could they be mistaken? If he's getting ready to die, does that mean he's really, in their mind, does that really mean he's the Messiah? I thought God did, couldn't die. And he's sitting there talking about dying. In their mind, does that make sense to you? It wouldn't make sense to me. Jesus claimed to be the Messiah, the light of the world. But notice that he stressed that the light was to be with them for only a little while longer and then it would be gone. He's talking about his death again. So he tells them that man must walk in the light while he has light. Since the light was going to be extinguished, it wouldn't always be present for man to see. And once the light was out, darkness would overtake and overcome men. Men would not know what they were doing. Jesus also stressed that man must believe in the light. If men would believe, something significant would happen. They would become children of the light. Right. Who is the light? Jesus said he's the light of the world. Amen. We get it confused sometimes. We think we're a light. Yeah. And I believe we are a light. But like I talked about a couple of Sundays ago when we talked about the moon, we're only a shadow of a light. Amen. He's the real light. We can try and try and try our best, but until he gets a hold of people's hearts, they won't change. That's right. That's right. In closing, April, if you want to get us something ready, the word believe or trust is a continuous action verb in the original Greek. And y'all, I don't use Greek or Hebrew to correct the, the Bible. I only use it because I believe my King James Bible is perfect. I only use it where I believe that it will help out the text that I'm preaching. Amen. The word become is a once for all act, a personal experience that happens all at once. So with that in mind, it helps us to better understand what Jesus said in verse 36. A person who truly sees Jesus Christ as the light of the world believes and trusts and continues to believe and trust. You begin to believe. Once you get it, you'll continue believing. That faith will never extinguish now. Amen. That's right. Okay? Uh, the very moment a person's heart leaps towards Christ in belief and trust, they become a child of the light and a child of God. Have you misunderstood the Messiah or the world? Have you thought Jesus just come in to feed you? Do you think Jesus just came down here to, to, to heal you or to do this or to do that? Well, he came to die for our sin. Amen. Would you like a better understanding of him? Come get it tonight. Trust him today. He can save you and change you and give you the understanding that you're looking for. Amen. Amen. Go ahead, April. Everybody stand up. Make it easier.